back to the channel. We got a pretty simple but pretty informative video to tell you guys about. I think it's something that everybody can relate to, but some people might not know what we're talking about or might hear some wrong things from the media. Uh, for instance, a buy a shotgun. Now protect yourself. Get a double barrel shotgun. Or a 9mm can blow your lungs out. A 9mm bullet blows the lung out of the body. Well, we're going to kind of show you the differences between them, and you can decide for yourself if that's true or not. So what we got here on the table, we got a 12 gauge shotgun. We got a 223 556. It's an AR, semi-automatic. And then we have a Glock 17, which is a nine millimeter. We'll just show you the difference between what all three rounds are gonna shoot. This one is a nine millimeter. This is what they say will blow your lungs out. This is a 223-556, which is using AR rifles, what they consider assault weapons. And this is a 12 gauge slug. It's just a one ounce reduced recoil slug. And just show you all the differences in the size of these. Yeah. Tell me how that nine millimeter and 223 looks a lot scarier than that. What do you think, Kate, between these? Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm taking one of these, uh, definitely not gonna be the shotgun. No, definitely not. No, I don't want that slug coming at me. Uh, I don't know, between these two, um, I'd probably rather take a nine. Than, I think I would too. I mean, yeah. they say that one will blow your lungs out though. Yeah. But you got to think, receiving into that, but the shooter's side. This round right here, it's an ounce of lead. That's going to be so much harder for the shooter to control, yeah. so much more recoil than any one of these. This is typically what your normal shotgun would be. And I mean, you can tell, we'll put them on the table to show you the size difference. Just, you can see the height, put it right there beside of it. Like, what do you think would be easier to control? Because you can adjust this so much more than you can this. Oh, okay. In that sense, yeah, yeah. I guess I was, I was thinking of like the barrel length of this one. Uh, I guess more like controlling. The shooter's easier to control that one. Yeah. So I mean, everybody's like, buy a shotgun. Why wouldn't you use this? Something that you feel more comfortable with shooting. You get what I mean? It, it's a lot. I mean, it's definitely more comfortable shooting. AR platform. And it really is. Well, there's so much you can do with them, like you were saying, with the, the MOC rail system and even on the stock, just everything. There's so many mods you can add to it. Yeah. Um, Especially if you got women or smaller frame shooters can shoot this and feel way more comfortable shooting that than they could grabbing a big 12 gauge shotgun. Or even like Joe Biden said, a double barrel. Get a double barrel shotgun. In yeah. that instance, it's like, no, man. Yeah. And they only hold two. And I mean, Look, heaven forbid a crackhead comes at you, you're going to need more than two rounds. Yeah, for sure. I would rather have a 30 round magazine any day. Just because it's got 30 rounds, it's, you're going to see that it's no more deadlier than an ounce of lead flying at you at once. Yep. And let alone the pistol. Show us the pistol right there. Even the pistol, that being said, like compared to the shotgun, you can handle this easier. It's smaller. You can put a flashlight on it much easier than you can the shotgun. Yep. Uh, it's nine millimeters, so the recoil's low. And there's always bigger pistols you can go with, but nine millimeters is the most common. You can find ammo for it. And especially if you're using it in your home or out here on the public and you have to shoot someone, I feel like this is going to underpenetrate a lot less than these two. Yep. It definitely would. What's your take on this? First off, it's going to be. If you ever had to, God forbid, use a gun more often than not, it's going to be a pistol because you're always going to be carrying it. So it's important to get comfortable with whatever you got. But that's the, that's the thing about a pistol, why it's so important to um, actually practice, train, and get good with it. Um, I mean, obviously, going back, easier to control is going to be the AR and all that stuff. But the pistol is going to be, I think, super important. A lot easier um, to have with you at all times. It, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, like, pistols are easier to add modifications to. Like, on the Glock, they've got the under rail up here. This one actually is an optics cut. Like, I can literally take this. It's so stupid. I can take this red dot off. But it still has the sights on here. So if you still, if you still want, um, want the sights, then, then you can do that. But besides that... Uh, Glock especially has so much stuff you can add to it. Like there, there's a lot of, there's probably more aftermarket stuff for the Glock than what there is for other pistol brands. Definitely. Uh, just because of how common it is and it's used more wildly. Police um, officers. 
yeah, police officers, law enforcement in general. Yeah. I so. will say, even with these modifications, a big one to note is like these are all semi automatic. Yeah. Just because this one looks different than the 12 gauge, don't mean that that one's any more deadly than that. They all function relatively the same. And we'll show you guys out here in just a second. I'll go ahead and I'll let Kay get loaded up with this 9mm and we'll shoot down right and just show you, like, like, how the weapon functions. Let's see. Yeah, let's go and do it. We've got 10 rounds loaded up in this. I'm just gonna, gonna shoot it straight down range. We're clear. You can see as a whole, it was all up here. And how far out was that? Um, 10 yards or Probably so, 10, yards. 10 to 12 yards. So it wasn't like for shooting a Glock, that wasn't an awful group, but it was, it was all up here because that red dot is terribly off. Um, if we move that there, you picture it, it's still within the, the 10 and the nines and stuff. So it's, nonetheless, yeah. it's 10 shots on target. It's yeah. pretty easy to shoot. Anybody could shoot that. Yeah, yeah. So you all can see that you can still control a pistol fine. Um, is other other ones easier to control? Yeah, because yeah. longer barrels and it's just more more ergonomic, I guess. Even but, five seven for that matter. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Oh yeah. Um, but with the pistol, you can still do a lot with it. There's a lot of training that goes into it with grip control, stance control, recoil control, breath control, all that stuff. Um, so pistol is probably one of the more, I would argue it's almost the most important one to train with just because you're yeah. carrying it every day. I will yeah. say though, one to throw back onto that is everybody talks about nine millimeter pistols being so dangerous. It is harder to shoot that pistol than anything else. To me, it's yeah. harder to shoot a pistol than it would be for a rifle or shotgun. Oh yeah. And I'm sure y'all will see that on here in a second when we shoot the others. It's oh, for sure. The We're going to go on to the 12 gauge shotgun. This one right here is the one Joe Biden says, buy a shotgun. And we're just going to show you a little bit like what an ounce of lead looks like going down the range and just how it functions the same as this gun, as you'll see here in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead, put my ears on, and we'll shoot three rounds down range. Set up the 12 gauges or one ounce slugs. Not anybody's going to pick up a 12 gauge and shoot that effective, but we put three rounds on him. Let's just see what three rounds of 12 gauge did compared to 10 rounds of nine millimeter. This is three rounds, this is one, and here's two. I mean, they pretty much hit the same spot, but you can see my fist for reference, that's a fist size hole in this dude. We're shooting paper for granted, but that's just to give you like a little idea of what a shotgun's really throwing down range, and it's only one solid projectile. That's pretty crazy, even at the range you can see. Like Call of Duty says, you got to be like five feet away from same range. You see what it's doing here. So it pretty much talks for itself. Let's go back and grab the AR and you pop him a few times with it. And see Let's what do happens. it. So we've got the KGM uh, build that we've got. The It's integrally suppressed. The Just good old AR-15. What they would consider an assault weapon. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and run it. The assault weapon it left the smallest holes. I mean, it's a 22. Everybody's like, it's a 22. All a 5.56 five, is is a 22 that's been on steroids for a while. It's just really? a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And the optic on that one, you can see it shot a little low with the seven because I was aiming directly at it. So, but otherwise, it was that was a solid, solid little group there. As you, Good and tight. But as we can see, though, like. The right person shooting all of these can shoot them just fine. But someone just getting into guns or don't really like recoil wise or don't have much experience, you can pretty much tell like these weapons here as you'll be able to see on video is a lot easier to shoot and control than the 12 gauge. Yeah. As they say, the 12 gauge is one shot of the 12 gauge, if you shoot buckshot, is equivalent to shooting nine, nine millimeters at once. And it's a nine millimeters gonna blow the lungs out. But as you can tell right there, and you can see in the video that we yeah. proved that kind of wrong. Yeah. 
because that is that right there is just two shots of a 12 gauge and you can see the blast of that is crazy yeah just the cavitation it left now like we said earlier i know it's paper this isn't uh a ballistic dummy or anything but we'll get some of those soon if the if y'all decide y'all like these kinds of videos yeah yeah but you can still see the differences if we're keeping the paper constant in this you can see the just the differences in the cavitation on these and explosiveness now just to throw out we know that the exit wounds are going to look different we yeah. do because speed's a factor range is a factor yeah. but if we're shooting here and we're talking more of the control of the weapon and how it shoots they generally function the same and the control of the weapons are going to be they're going to differ each one but you can see based on this like i will tell you right now the 12 gauge is going to leave the biggest hole in you going out the back it's going to then the the 556 five, like if you're shooting ball there could be some cases where it does leave a smaller exit than the nine just based on the sheer speed if that bullet wants to break up or hits a bone yeah it, it, there's so many different factors in this that you really can't tell but you can kind of much figure it out based on experience other youtube videos but you pretty much get the idea here that all guns aren't built different, but some are easier than others to shoot. And what you hear on the news and media is not always factual. With these major differences, that's enough for you to be able to kind of see the differences and which ones is more controllable. You can see that with the groupings, especially between the 9 and the 5.56. Five, well, not necessarily the caliber, but the, the platform difference, mm -hmm. pistol versus rifle. And that was just a good old 16-inch, well, after the suppressor, it's about 16 inches. Yep. And um, yeah, I hope you guys were able to see the good differences in that and even able to see the differences in recoil and control when we were doing it. Um, I'm, I was definitely wrong at the beginning. Over this first, I was saying that shotgun was more easily controlled, but it's still, I mean, it, it was a good, good controlled uh, group with it, or not group, but just shots that you left on it. So, again, that Ethan's very skilled too. So, again, that goes with the person shooting it too. Yeah, it yeah. all depends on that. Like, don't expect you to be better or like shoot really good with one until you practice and practice. Cause I mean, nobody's gonna be perfect at shooting, but the more comfortable you get, yeah. start moving into the other ones. But if you're just a first time gun buyer, I will say, come up here to center target, shoot a few of these yourself and check it out. I mean, guys at the range will help you. You can shoot 12 gauge, nine or the five, five, six. And just find out for yourself, but I will say, the first time pistol and a rifle, I would definitely go with a nine and the two two three. Either one, you're you're going to be pretty satisfied with. Yep. Well, thanks guys for watching, and we'll catch you on the next catch one. Catch you on the next one.